Hey everyone, it's Emily with Cozy Clicks, and today I want to show you how to create a composite photo using a digital background. So we're going to be taking this photo right here, and we're going to be placing our subject into this purple flower garden here, which is a little more beautiful and exciting than the basic background here. Plus, it helps with the purple and yellow create a nice complement with the colors. Now, in this tutorial, I know that composite photos can sometimes seem a little overwhelming. I want to try to show you as simply as I can, but give you as much information as I can so that your composites look more realistic and you understand the why for the things you're doing when you combine two photos onto a digital background. Uh, before I get started though, I would love to know that you guys are watching and where you're from. I know I connect with a lot of you over on Instagram or in my Facebook group, but I feel like sometimes here on YouTube, I don't connect with you all as much. So let me know, please, who you are, where you are watching from, because I would love to connect with you all on YouTube a little more too. Let's get started though. I'm going to start with my subject here or this photo. Now cutting out a subject can sometimes seem to be a very tedious process and difficult process. Make it easy on yourself by choosing a photo that doesn't have a lot going on in the background and has a lot of contrast between the background and the subject. So the busier the background is, the more difficult it's going to be to pull or cut that subject out. So what I'm gonna do with this photo here is I'm going to go and I'm gonna choose the um, Quick Select tool, okay? So I'm gonna hit Quick Select, which on mine, it's the fourth one down, and you'll notice that there's two buttons that pop up on the top. You're going to hit Select Subject. Now most of the time, Photoshop is going to do a really great job selecting your subject for you. You can see over here on her shoulder, it kind of missed a part right there. So I could just grab this brush tool in the top left hand side with the plus, and I can just kind of add that back in. Okay. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit select and mask because even though it did a great job, I'm noticing it missed some pieces. I noticed right here, for some reason, it didn't add in the um, dots to her dress, so we're just gonna delete those there. I'm gonna grab that plus one again, and we're just gonna delete. And then this is where the tricky part comes in. Anytime that there's hair on a subject, which most of your subjects probably have some kind of hair or fur, right? Just like hers. Let's zoom in right here because you can see that there are a lot of areas that it just, Photoshop just didn't create that, um, that outline. And so what you can do is go down to the second brush that's over here on your left. It's called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. And you're going to paint, I'm going to make sure that plus is selected over there. You're just going to kind of paint around those areas that are a little harder. And you see Photoshop does a really great job just pulling those out. Now, sometimes Photoshop doesn't do the best job at this and you can always retry it again or adjust your brush size or adjust where you're placing the brush. And sometimes I just close out and I reopen it again and see if that helps out. So this can be a tricky process to do and it does take some practice. Now I also see over here there is some hair. So again, with that Refine Edge brush tool, I'm just going to grab that and pull that into that section of my photo. Maybe bring in a little bit more of this hair and maybe just go around the hat just a little bit more. I also might kind of pull in that shoulder that's just over there. Then I'm just going to scroll down and check and see how the rest of the cutout looks. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Now, like I said in the beginning, and I want to reiterate this to you guys, if your background is really busy, if there's a lot of things going on, the way that I just showed you to cut out your subject might be a lot difficult. So make it easy for yourself in the beginning and start with a photo that doesn't have a lot going on in the background and that's gonna make it easy for you. 
Now, from here, what we're gonna do is I'm just going to go to, out at the bottom it says Output 2, I'm going to choose a new layer. So we're gonna hit New Layer, and I'm gonna hit OK, and you're gonna see that that pops up with the cutout here. You can see there it is with the background on, but all I really want is this layer here. I'm gonna zoom back out of her. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this down, and I'm gonna get my Move tool, and I'm gonna click on her now, and we're just gonna move it to that digital background. And then I'm gonna X out of her because we are done with that one, okay? So I'm not gonna save the changes. Now, the second thing when you're working with composite photography or you're working with a digital background is you wanna make sure that your subject is in proportion to the background, right? So if we had her really big right here, she's just not proportionate to what's going on. So we have to make her a little bit smaller. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to Edit, Free Transform, and we're just gonna drag her to um, a proportion that looks correct to the digital background. So she's gotta be a little bit smaller than that original. So I'm gonna place her right about there. Okay, I think she looks pretty good right about this, and I'm gonna click like that, okay? Now, a couple other things are happen happening here, okay? First, she's not in the correct depth of field. So some of these flowers would probably be in front of her. So we've gotta erase a little bit in front of her to make it work with this digital background. The next thing we're gonna look at is the toning because the light and the colors that were coming from this original photo are not the same as the background. So I'm gonna show you how to do that so that your photo blends better and it looks more realistic, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do on this photo is I'm gonna create a layer mask here on my background copy. And I'm just gonna bring some of those flowers back in from the foreground. Because you can see right here where it's all blurry, that was how, how the photo was shot, that the blurriness is a different depth of field than the sharpness of her dress here. So I'm going to get a brush and I'm gonna get a black brush at 100% and I'm gonna make sure the flow is 100% to start with. And I'm just gonna dab some of that digital background back in. Now in real life, if she was standing in these flowers, she wouldn't be totally hidden. We would see some of that yellow dress still pop through. So I'm gonna lower the opacity now to about 50, 55%, and I'm gonna start dabbing on a little bit more. So I'm just dabbing on a little more of those foreground flowers. So it kind of disappears her dress, but still allows some of it to show through. And then finally, I'm gonna take that opacity and I'm gonna drop it even more, maybe 20. Um, I've got it 17% there, and I'm just gonna do a couple more dabs, trying to bring some of those foreground colors back in and make it look like she's standing behind those blurry flowers that are in the foreground. So right now, that's already looking much better. Okay, now this is the part I think is really important and that's making sure that your digital background or whatever you are combining in your composite, making sure that that and your subject have the same color tones or closer color tones because that's gonna help make it look more realistic. So what we're gonna do here is one way that you can do that is to use curves and create a curves layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to my um, adjustment layers, I'm gonna choose curves, and there's a couple things you guys have to do here to make sure that this works. Um, so pay close attention right here, okay? First thing you've gotta do is you've gotta make sure that you're clicked on this half white, half black circle that's right here, not on the layer mask. So on this, um, this part right here on your curves adjustment layer should be highlighting, highlighted, okay? The next thing I want you to do is I want you to create a clipping mask. And that's located right here. It's like a square and there's a little arrow pointing down. And what that is gonna do is the adjustments that we make on this curves layer are only going to affect our subject, not the entire image, okay? Now in that curves layer, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to go up to auto and I want you to click the alt key and then click auto. And we're gonna get a new window that pops up right here. I want you to click the button that says find dark and light colors, okay? 
Now, when we do that, it shows all, right away the black, the gray, the white. I wanna find the colors that are in the background and I want to put them, I want to combine them onto her. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I'll show you right now, okay? So for the shadows, I'm gonna click that right there. And I'm going to, my eyedropper will pop up as soon as I click that black rectangle. And I'm gonna choose a color in the background that is a shadow color, okay? So probably right in here with the purple flowers is more of a shadow that's in that background. And you can see when I do that, it makes the shadows in my subject match the shadows in the background. Okay, so as I kind of click around, and you can see in my color panel right now, you can see that changing and moving around. So I'm going to keep, I think that looks pretty good. I might make it just a little bit darker, but still in that same color palette. I'm going to hit OK. We're not going to do anything with the midtones, but I am going to work on the highlights. So I just clicked on that white highlight rectangle. And now looking in my background, I'm going to pick an area that's very bright, okay? So I might pick an area back here. Now to me, that's making her look a little bit too dark. I'm just kind of testing and trying some of the different areas. And I'm getting, I see it. there's several different color palettes that keep popping up within the same color range. So I'm keep getting this kind of like orangey tone that keeps popping up. This is just too dark for me for that highlights, but I am going to keep that same color tone, that same palette, and I'm just going to move it up a little bit, choosing one that's a little bit lighter in that same color scheme. Okay, just so it goes on. And to me, that looks, that one's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so you see we've got our shadows are not completely black anymore. They're matched with the background and our highlights are not completely white anymore. They're more matched with the background of our image. I'm going to click OK. OK right there. This box will pop up. You're going to want to hit no. You don't want to save those as your default colors. And then the last thing that I would do to try to make my subject blend or match more with the digital background is to work on the curves layer and I'm going to take the white curve or the RGB uh, curve now and I'm just going to work on that one pulling it up um, and you can see that doesn't look really good um, pulling that up or down trying to get better contrast in my picture so I might have to bring it down this way maybe up this way just kind of playing around seeing what the best contrast would be in this image. Okay. And I'm just moving it around. I actually it looked pretty good right about where we had it. Um, just moving that one up just a little bit and I think that looks pretty good. So you can see from there, there it is before that was the original color toning and there it is so it blends in better with that picture. Now, I want to give you guys a freebie today because you stayed and you learned to the end of this video, and I really hope that this helped you kind of understand working with composites and digital backgrounds more. I have a low resolution digital background for you that you can grab right now in this link here. I'll put it right up on the right up here on the screen. Um, just go to cozyclicks.com forward slash freebie background and you can grab a low res digital background for free so you can kind of try and play around with some of these techniques. And then the Cozy Click store has a full line of digital backgrounds that has just opened up in the shop. So if you check those out at cozyclicks.com forward slash digital backgrounds, you will be able to see all of the high res backgrounds that are now open in the shop. I hope this helped you guys a lot. Like I said before, let me know you watched it. Let me know where you're from. I hope this helped you with your digital backgrounds and composite photography.